The website that I have right in front of me is a shop, as you might have seen. We also have here refine your search options where we can search for all accessories, corporate gifts, foods and drinks, gifts and lifestyle. We also see the option to log into my account as well as home, which just basically brings us here. And you can scroll down and you can see uh, all of the different things that are being filtered. We can accept, we can basically select accessories and we can see all of the names and the descriptions of the accessories that we can find as well as foods and drinks. So in today's video, we're going to be actually hacking this website to show you how you can actually or how hackers actually approach this so you can maybe learn and utilize this on real targets like bug bounty targets, which of course allow this behavior. Of course, remember to be ethical and responsible always. And I mean always because this can land you jail time because you're committing a crime if you exploit this and basically get something out of it. But in the bug bounty case, you can only earn money legally from it. So only hack websites you have permission to. And this is a fake website just to demonstrate how this all works. And maybe if you want to learn hacking and get into depth of this, then check out my course link is in the description, as well as my platform Avena, which is an amazing platform help you basically there to help you get organized and, you know, stay on track with your hacking journey. So check them both out. Links are in the description. Firstly, might have anybody who seen who has saw this video might have already thought that the accessories looks a bit interesting. Uh, we can basically hack the website, but there is a, a, probably a way to just exploit it either, either way. Uh, we can maybe go for the XSS here. If you're not familiar with it, then you know you should probably check out my channel. I have a lot of videos on that. But one thing I haven't covered really is SQL injection. And really, this just tells me that filters are basically a rude and where to find SQL issues. So to test that, I'll just add a single quote and hit enter. And if we get an error, that means, okay, we have an SQL injection. But this is an injection, but we need to basically find a way to exploit it. And there are several ways to do it. We can use something now to basically pass in the SQL query right over here and get the access to website. Uh, so let's see what we can find on this website. So we can basically start by calling union and select. Now union select basically says, okay, execute that before, you know, there's probably select everything from filter name accessories and union select execute that as well. So we probably need to find how many strings are being returned so that we know what we need to basically find. And so we can, you know, just to fulfill the syntax because both of these queries must return the same amount of columns. So we basically can put like maybe a and comment everything the rest and see if we have an error. Okay, we do have an error. So we can maybe now say B2 or N. Okay, I think I screwed up. I forgot to add the other okay so we now know that this returns two strings so that we don't so now that we know it returns two strings we basically want to maybe find every single table that exists on this website and generally speaking that's actually very easy uh, we can use something called information schema tables and as you can see it tell, allows you to get information about tables and views within the database by default it will, it will show you this information for every single table and view that is in the database. And that is very, very important for this particular website. So we can delete everything right here just so we can actually have a nicer way. So union select, and we can go for the table underscore name, and then we can go for null as well, because remember it's returning two values, uh, maybe from information schema tables, copy that up, boom. And maybe we can comment everything else. Uh, let's see if that will work. Okay, so there we go. We see PG partition table, PG available extension version. So we right now are seeing every single table within our database. So that's good. Uh, let's just take a look and see if anything look interesting. We have P a lot of these. There's one called views that could be interesting. Uh, triggers, user mapping options, anything related to users is good. And if you're seeing all of this, there's a fun way to basically scan it without actually going through it all. You can click control F and then basically go for maybe user and we can just go through 14 results and let's see if we can find anything. Oh, we do have something called users. This could be interesting though. See, remember this could actually just be the users table, which we need maybe. So I don't know, I'm going to copy this up and we're going to go ahead and see all of the columns available in this, you know, table. To do that, we're going to be using information schema dot columns. 
And it basically allows you to get information about all columns or all tables and views within a database. By default, it shows information for every single table uh, and the view in the database, but we're actually going to narrow that down and only see the columns from the specific table. So we're actually going to be rerunning the query. So let me again escape it. So union select information schema columns now. So let's just copy that up columns. And of course, uh, I'm sorry, that's not really what I should be doing. I went ahead. So we need to get the column name and null because remember, we're returning two values uh, from information schema columns. And we need to do where table underscore name equals and then we basically pass in the name which is uh i forgot where it is actually <laughs> i have to find the scroll again shit <laughs> ah there it is that's it so let's just copy that up let's go back here paste it right over here and let me just um comment everything else and let's hit enter okay so we have username and password columns and now we can basically run another query to get every single username from the table name users blah 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 and get every single password from that table as well which is relative to this username and let's see if we can find something interesting so again we have to run another query honestly the best way to do it is to maybe um is to just maybe run uh, notepad because we have to do a lot of copying and pasting now uh this is from the last video actually <laughs> this is interesting so let me just uh, get that. Okay, so let me copy in the username field. So this is the username column. This right here is the password column. And uh, no, I don't want to save that. And we obviously need to get the table from where we want to select everything. So this is the users table. So let's just get that down. Okay, cool. So now the simplest way is to just get all the users from this table, from this uh, whole website. So union select, and we now need to get the username. And we need to get the password and from this right table here, boom, comment everything out, enter. And there we go. We see winner, that is the password from winner, Carlos, that is the password from Carlos. And we obviously have an administrator password as well. So let me copy the username from the administrator and let me copy in the password from the administrator as well, just so we can maybe log into his account and see what we can do. So let's go to my accounts. Uh, I can paste in the password already. The administrator, boom, log in. Okay, and there we go. We just basically found out that we can find the password from the administrator and log into this website with no problems. And what you saw right here is actually the SQL injection weaponized and shown what actually can happen. And of course, this is a very serious bug, which can actually get you a lot of money if you report it to the company. So now that you understand that, make sure to always be responsible and ethical, always actually follow the per per principles and rules. And good news, since we have actually reached 40,000 subscribers, next video, I'm going to show my face. So we're going to be actually utilizing my face from, from now on in the video. So yeah, that's actually going to be something very exciting. So yeah, thank you so much for following my channel for quite a long time. And yeah, I'm not to yap anymore. I have a video tomorrow where I'm going to actually yap all of the time. So thank you so much for watching this video. Stay safe, stay responsible, and as always, peace.